AFC's Movement Yoga Flow Series. Uh, today's class is going to be a traditional mat yoga class, so you will need a yoga mat. Um, and if you like yoga blocks or you use yoga blocks, you're welcome to use some yoga blocks, but this will be a traditional mat yoga class. Um, this is geared for people coming into yoga for the first time, so I'm not going to ask you to do anything like a crazy inversion or a bunch of twisting or binding. Uh, you know, it's, it's gonna be a simple, straightforward class. I'll be performing everything from the side once we do get started. So my right will be your right, my left will be your left. Um, so it's not like our traditional classes where I'm mirroring you, because yoga is a bit different. Um, let's see, so a little bit about yoga. So the ancient practice of yoga combines meditation, breathing, postures, and poses to make a connection with the mind, the body, and the spirit. There's been evidence that shows that yoga can lower stress, increase strength, reduce back pain, all while providing exercise. So therapeutic activities like yoga can complement cancer-fighting uh, medical treatment and strengthen the body's immune system. One study done in 2013 out of Norway found that regular practice of gentle yoga and meditation had an effect in circulating cancer-fighting immune cells. Mindfulness meditation also appears to change the brain and immune function in positive ways. So this month, we invite you to participate in a variety of different yoga methods. Um, we ask that you be open, approach these new classes with an open mind, and always listen to your body and feel free to unmute if I'm not giving a, a, a modification that you feel that you need. All right, and if you want a little bit more, go a little bit further than what I'm offering. All right, so today, like I said, basic yoga movements is what we're gonna be going over. I'm actually going to start us off with some sun salutations. So you hear the word sun salutation often in yoga, and it's a series of poses that link together to form a flow. And I want us to go through a sun salutation one slow time together, and I'll show you all the modifications for each pose. So if I'm asking you to hold something for too long, feel free to relax. And then we'll go through it two times a little bit faster so you can see what it feels like to warm up the body. Then I'm gonna go into the poses I have for today. Okay. So let's get into our sun salutation. So for sun salutation, we actually need to start standing. So, you're going to stand at the top of your mat. And you're going to find the top of your mat. You're going to make sure that your feet are hip width apart. You're going to spread your toes so you can feel them on the mat. You're going to take your arms down by your sides with your palms turned forward. You're going to close your eyes. And we're going to take a few moments just to breathe here. So I want you to try to practice today your ocean breath. So that means we inhale in through the nose and out through your nose. So we're using this kind of breathing to strengthen the diaphragm and calm the nervous system. So while your mountain pose may not feel like much of a pose, I promise you it is. This is just a moment for you to think about pulling your shoulders down and back, engaging your core, feeling your energy flow through your body down into your mouth. Here, you can go ahead and open up your eyes. We're going to inhale your arms up overhead, reaching nice and high. On your exhale, we're going into a forward fold. So we're going to bring those hands all the way down toward your mat, toward your toes. Some of you might have really tight hamstrings and you might want to bend your knees. That's fine. Bend your knees if you need to. So this is a forward fold. Modifying it would just be bending your knees. You want your arms to hang heavy. You want your head to hang heavy. Feeling that stretch all along the spine. Awesome. 
On your inhale, we're going to come to a half forward fold. So that means you're just going to bring your hands right above your kneecaps and you're going to lengthen your spine. So notice my eyes are still looking down at the floor because my head, neck, and spine need to stay in one straight line. From here, you take an exhale, and we're going to go back down to that forward fold. So hands as far down on your mat as you can. Alright, from here, this is where things start to get a little bit more fun and challenging for your sun salutations. So you might need to put a bend in your knees, because I want both hands to come down on your mat, and you're going to step both feet back. So you're in a plank position. So when you're in a plank position, your wrist is in line with your shoulder, your core is engaged, your bottom's not lifted high and it's not sinking down low. You want to make sure that your spine is in a neutral position. Now if this kind of position is too difficult for you, you can always have your knees down on the floor for a plank position instead. You don't have to have your legs lifted. Good. All right, so as you exhale, we're going to go and do a chaturanga. So chaturanga means you're going to point your elbows back behind you and lower your chest down to the floor. Good. And then from here, tops of your feet are going to come down on the mat. And you're going to lift yourself up into an up dog position. So your up dog position, your shoulders are down and back. My chest is open and my thighs are off my mat. Just the tops of my feet are touching the mat. Good. Modifications. If this looks like it's too much for you, do a baby cobra instead. So baby cobra, your stomach gets to come down on the mat, your legs are down on the mat, your elbows are back and your chest is still lifted. Modifications. Good. All right, from your modification, I want you to tuck your toes, Push yourself up to what we call down dog position. So for your down dog position, think of yourself as an upside down V. So your feet are hip width apart, your hands are out in front of you, but you're pushing your weight into your fingers and your palms to push your hips back. So that way you feel a nice deep stretch in the back of your legs. You should feel a stretch along your back where your lats are as well. Modification for this, you can have your knees bent, your heels might be lifted off the floor, that's fine. All right, on your exhale, let's go ahead and step or walk your feet back towards your hands. So you've returned into that forward fold position. Okay. Then you inhale up to that half forward fold. Nice long spine. Exhale all the way down to that forward fold again. And this time we're going to inhale, reach those arms up to the sky, standing up nice and tall. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Good. And that is a sun salutation. So I want us to go through that two more times. Traditionally, you would do it 108 times before getting into your practice, but that is way too many times. So we're going to go through it two more times, make sure we're nice and warm. So let's go ahead. Your hands are at heart center. Your feet are still hip width apart. We're going to go ahead. We inhale, reach the arms up to the Sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up to your half forward fold. Exhale all the way back down, forward fold. Step back into your plank position. Good. Exhale, chaturanga. You can also do that on your knees. Inhale to either cobra or you can do your up dog. And then exhale, down dog. Inhale as you step your feet up towards your hands. Back into that forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, back down the full forward fold. And then inhale, reach 
those arms up overhead, lengthen the spine, exhale. Hands, heart, center. Good. All right, let's go through that one more time together. Inhale, arms reach up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, all the way forward fold. Inhale, step back into your plank position. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to either your cobra or your up dog. Good. Exhale, down dog. Inhale as you step your feet up towards your hands. Good. Exhaling into that forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, all the way back down to your forward fold. And then inhale, reach those arms up overhead. Exhale, hands heart center. Good. All right, we should be feeling a little bit warmer now. So let's go ahead and move into a low lunge. So you'll see a lot of these sun salutation moves as we go through our next few poses. So from here, I want us to go ahead and inhale those arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Good. From here, we're gonna move into a low lunge. So you can always grab a towel if you need to, if you need to place it under your knee, because you're gonna take your left foot and you're gonna step it back behind you, and then you're gonna drop your knee down onto your mat, and then the top of that left foot will make contact with your mat. So sometimes we need to put something under the knee if it's a little bit more sensitive. I made my mat extra cushiony today for that reason. Once you're comfortable, I want you to go ahead and you're going to slowly begin to lift your chest up, bringing your shoulders over your hips. Make sure you spread the toes on that right foot. You're going to slightly tuck your tailbone under you. And we should be feeling a nice deep stretch here on that left side. So if balance is an issue for you, you can always use some yoga blocks for balance. Or you can have those hands on your hips. Kind of just feeling your body sink a little bit lower and lower into this lunge position. One thing you want to be mindful for as we're doing this is you want your right knee and ankle to have a direct line with one another. So make sure that your knee doesn't come past your ankle. If it is, your foot probably needs to come out just a little bit further in front of you. Brace your core. And better practice your breathing, inhaling into the nose, out through the nose. Try to hold it here for two more breaths. All right, on your exhale, let's go ahead. Take your hands down to your mat on the outside of that right foot. I want you to tuck your left toes so we can lift that left knee up. And you're just going to go ahead and hop that left foot forward to meet your right. We're back in that forward fold position. Inhale up to that half forward fold. Exhale all the way back down to that forward fold. And now let's go ahead and take that right foot. We're going to step it back behind us. Nice big step back. And then you're going to lower that right knee down. Top of the right foot makes contact with the mat. And then... Slowly begin to lift that torso, so your shoulders over your hips. Tucking the tailbone slightly, so now we feel that stretch on the right side. And said, your hands might be holding onto your yoga blocks for balance, or you can always hold onto your hips. 
Focus here on your breath. Inhaling in through your nose and out through your nose. On your next exhale, let's go ahead and bring those hands down to your mat on the outside of that left foot. Tuck those right toes so that way we can lift the right knee. Step that right knee forward to meet your left. You're back in that forward fold position. Now let your head hang heavy. Let your arms hang heavy. Inhale to your half forward fold. Exhale, all the way down to your forward fold. Hands on the mat. This time, I want you to go ahead and step back into your down dog position. So you're going to set both feet back, and then you're going to lift your hips up. Make sure those feet are hip width apart. And use the fingers and the palms to push your upper body away. It's almost like you're trying to point your chest between your thighs. Good. All right, from here we're gonna do a three-legged down dog for just a second. So what that means is we're just gonna lift that right foot up off your mat. And then from here, I want you to bend that right knee. You're gonna come into a plank position. And we're gonna set that right knee down on your mat between your hands. And then I'm gonna draw my left knee down toward the floor. So we're getting into a pigeon position here. So this might not work for everybody. So modification. You want to first make sure you're on the outside of that right knee. Your shin doesn't make contact with the mat. If this is too much for you, sit on that right hip and put a bend in your left knee. This might be easier for some of us if we have really tight hips. So this is an option. I'm sitting on my right glute. I have a bend in my right knee and I have a bend in my left knee. A little bit more advanced. That left knee is down on the mat. Still have that bend in the right leg. So this is our traditional pigeon pose. So if you want to, you can either stay in this upright position for your pigeon pose, or if you feel a little bit more comfortable, you might start bringing your forearms down to your mat and hold it that way. The most important thing here you want to remember is that you're on the outside of that right leg. So again, my shin bone is not, there's no pressure on my shin because I'm on the outside of my right leg. You should be feeling a deep stretch in your glutes on the right side and your hip on the right side. That's where you should be feeling this. You might feel it on the left side too. That left side might be tight. And we're also lengthening that side right now. Remember, we want to breathe. Mm -hmm. On your exhale, you can go ahead and bring your torso back up. If you did, lower it down. And now we need to have those left toes make contact with your mat so you can begin to lift that right leg up. You can step back into your down dog. It might even feel good to lift that right leg up and stretch it out. Come back into that traditional down dog position. And we're gonna switch sides. So this time, we're gonna lift that left leg up Bend the left knee. Bring that left knee between your hands or as close as you can get it. Then turn that left knee on its side. Then you're gonna extend that right leg back behind you. So now we feel that deep stretch on the left side of our glutes here and our hips. Your little pinky toes should be closest to the floor. Remember, if you need that modification, 
You can always sit on your left hip, put a bend in your right knee, and hold the position this way. Traditional, right leg is extended. If you feel comfortable, maybe you can start to lower that chest closer to your mat so you can get a deeper stretch in that left glute and hip area. you come back into traditional down dog and then from here let's go ahead and step the feet forward to the hands coming into your forward fold and then one vertebra at a time we'll slowly begin to roll ourselves all the way back up to that standing position bringing the shoulders over the hips good all right I'll turn forward for this one because we're going to move into a tree pose. So I will mirror you for this one if you need it. So you're going to face forward. You want to make sure that you spread your toes. This is a balancing exercise. It's also good for the hip. So I want you to go ahead and you're going to shift your weight into your right leg. And you're going to take the bottom of your left foot. And you're going to bring it to your right ankle, almost like a little kickstand. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, you might take the bottom of that left foot to your calf. If you're feeling even more adventurous, you might be able to lift it up so you can place it on the inner thigh. Requires a bit more balance, as you can see. I almost fell over there. You want to make sure that no matter where your foot is at, it's always above or below your knee, never directly on the side of the knee. So you find what position works best for you. Engage your core, squeeze that right glute. Think about grounding all of your weight into that right foot. Your hands can start here in that traditional prayer pose. Or you might be able to take those arms up overhead, almost like a V for victory. And reach up nice and high, relaxing the shoulders. This is a challenging balance pose. If you need to hold on to something, you can always hold on to a chair or a countertop. Take one more breath here. On your exhale, lower those arms down and lower that foot down. Good. We're going to switch over to the other side. So now you're going to shift your weight into your left foot. Spread those left toes so you have some grip on the mat. Sometimes I even do this one off the mat so that way it feels, I can feel the ground a bit more. You can take the bottom of that right foot to your ankle. You can take it to your calf or you can bring it up to your inner thigh. Whichever one feels better for you. If it is up on that inner thigh, you want to squeeze your inner thigh almost like you're pushing your foot into your thigh. From here, those hands can either be at heart center or you might take those arms up like a V for victory and reach up high. So whichever one works best for you. And remember to breathe, squeeze that left glute. Good. 
on your exhale, let's lower those arms down, and then lower the foot back down. Very nice. All right, let's go ahead and you can step back onto your mat if you did step off. We're going to be at the top of your mat here. Feet are hip width apart, toes are spread. Inhale, reach those arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, all the way down, forward fold. Step back into your plank position. And then from here, I just want you to lower the knees down so that way we're on all fours. So you're in a tabletop position is what we call this. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. We're gonna move into our cat and cow. So from here, when you inhale, I want you to drop your belly, arch your spine, tailbone lifts up, and your eyes look to where the wall and ceiling meet. On your exhale, we're gonna pull the belly button in, round your spine, round your shoulders, drop your head. And I want you to keep going back and forth there for a few moments here. So inhaling to cow, Exhale to your cat. Good. I'm really exaggerating those movements. Moving the spine in both directions. Let's go ahead and come back to that neutral spine position. And we're going to go into what's called a child's pose. So for child's pose, you're just going to sink your hips back towards the top or towards your heels. Reach those arms out in front of you. switch to the other side. So now you extend that right leg back behind you. Foot can be pointed or flexed. You can focus here on just keeping that leg lifted. It's like I said, this is already challenging for the core and for your balance. But if you want to try the next step, you start walking those left fingers out in front of you. And maybe lifting that left hand off your mat. Again, make sure your head, neck, and spine are in one straight line. On your exhale, let's go ahead and lower the hand and the knee back. 
back down to your mat. Good. Back in that tabletop position. From here, I want us to thread the needle. So this is really good for the shoulder. So you're going to stay in this tabletop position. I want you to take your left hand, thread it underneath your right, and take that left shoulder down on your mat. So your hips are still lifted. My left arm's extended to the right side of my body. And then I'm going to reach my right arm toward the top of my mat. position. Now we'll switch to the other side. So you take that right arm, thread it underneath your left, and bring that right arm down on your mat. Shoulders down on the mat. That right ear is on the mat. Extend that left arm up to the top of your mat. From here, I want you to go ahead and bring your hands back by your sides. You're going to push yourself up to that tabletop position. Then I want you to go ahead and you're going to have a seat in the middle of your mat. Have your legs extended out in front of you. that 
twist, coming back to center. Um, cross that right leg. Let's go ahead and we're going to switch to the other side. So right leg stays long. Put a bend in that left knee. You can either keep it on that same side or if you feel comfortable, hop the left knee or hop that left foot over your right knee. Good. You can either hug that left leg as you twist to your left and look over that left shoulder. Or if you're a bit more flexible when it comes to twisting, you can take that right knee or that right elbow over the left knee and twist that way. Sometimes you always notice one side might be a little bit more flexible than the other. I know for me, this side wants to hug the knee, so I'm going to modify here. Exhale, let's go ahead and release that twist. Coming back to center, uncross that leg. All right, just a couple more things before we get into Shavasana. So from here, I want you to sit up on your mat. And this is where some of you might put a beach towel or something under your knees if sitting like this isn't comfortable for you yet. And you're gonna move that excess meat out of the way. So that way you can feel your sit bones on your mat. We're going to do what's called staff pose. It looks really simple, but it's actually probably one of the most challenging poses because it requires that you bring your hands by your hips, maybe a little bit behind your hips, and you're going to sit up nice and tall. So you press your fingers and your palms into the mat to lengthen your spine. So it's as if you're sitting up against a wall, but Instead of the wall helping us sit in this upright position, we're holding ourselves in this upright position. Make sure your core is braced. Uh, and you might have to play around with where your hands are. Some of you might need to have your hands further back behind you in order to sit up tall. Some of you might have them right next to your hips. Everyone's body is a little bit different, so feel free to customize and play around with it. Take one more breath here. On your exhale, you can go ahead and release that spine. See how challenging that pose really was. And then I want you to go ahead and we're going to lie down on our mat. So I want you to lower yourself all the way down onto your mat. And I want you to put a bend in your knees so your feet make contact with the mat. Take your arms out to your sides like a T. And then I want you to go ahead and drop both knees to your left as you look to your right. Inhale, back to center. And then exhaling, dropping both knees to your right as you look to your left. Good. And just keep moving back and forth here, going at your own pace. your next exhale. Let's go ahead and bring your legs back to center. And I want you to go ahead and extend those legs out onto your mat. Take your arms down by your sides with your palms turned up to the sky. I want you to close your eyes as we move into corpse pose or shavasana. So this is the relaxation portion of class. So your eyes are closed. Your breathing can go back to however you feel most comfortable breathing. I want you to now focus on your mind for a moment. And I want you to shut off any thoughts 
concerning the future, concerning the past. I want you to stay right here in this moment, taking the time to check in with your body, see how it's feeling after class. Give yourself a moment to just be. Next, I want you to bring your awareness to your forehead and your eyebrows. I want you to relax those muscles. Make sure you're not furrowing your brows. Nice, relaxed forehead. Relax your eyes and your eyelids. Make sure you're not forcing the eyes closed, but they're just gently closed. Relax your tongue away from the roof of your mouth. And relax your jaw muscles. Allow your lips to naturally part. With each exhale you take, feel your shoulders and your back sink deeper into your mouth. Feel that release of letting go move down through your arms all the way to the tips of your fingers. Feel your stomach barely rise and fall as the breathing slows down. Relax your hips and your glutes into your mat, allowing the body to sink into a deeper state of relaxation. Allow that feeling of letting go to move down your legs, past your knees, down your shins, all the way to the feet that you're going to allow to roll out to the sides. And take a few moments here of silence for yourself. Keeping your eyes closed, I want you to start wiggling your fingers and toes, bringing small movements back to your body to reignite your nervous system. Bring those fingers and toes back to neutral. To go ahead and you can roll onto your left side for a moment. You can keep those eyes closed a little bit longer. Rest on your left side. Take a couple breaths here. On your exhale, 
Once you begin to push yourself up off your mat, coming into a seated position that feels comfortable for you. So maybe you're cross-legged, maybe your legs are out in front of you, however you feel most comfortable. Sitting up nice and tall here, opening up your eyes, bringing the backs of your hands to your knees, Take a few mindful breaths here, inhaling in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time, in through your nose, out through the mouth. Good. From here, I want you to inhale and reach your arms up to the sky, lengthening your spine, lifting nice and tall. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Bring those prayer hands up to your third eye on your forehead, knowing the truth. Bring them to your lips so we can always speak the truth. And bring them to your heart, knowing that we need to live the truth. And let's end together by saying namaste. In case if you don't know what that means, it just means thank you for opening yourselves to me as I have opened myself to you. And thank you for joining me in this practice today.